The next step is to place your photos on your page. Uh, it helps to know roughly where you want the pages to go, uh, sorry, the photos to go on your page. Uh, and uh, first thing you've got to do in a yearbook spread is create an eye line. Now, if I pull down from the, the uh, ruler a line, if I'm on my page, it will just give me a line for one page. If I go off my spread, it goes across the entire spread. So I'm going to pull down some lines for myself. I'm going to put one at 40, and I'm going to put one at 40 P6. That will be my eye line, about two-thirds of the way down. And I know from the way I want to lay out my page with a headline, I'm going to have one more um, at around 9. So that's going to give me a framework for how my page should look. And depending on what your design or look is for the year, you will have a certain look in your yearbook spread. Now next is uh, that you want to create some photo boxes. Photo boxes are the rectangle frame tool with the X through. So when you click on that, it changes to the tool and then you can make your selection of boxes in the places where you think you're going to need your photos. So I'm going to need photos and I have a rough idea of where I want them to be. So I will pull those in and uh, drag them in and I try to stay right within my margins and stay within the, the grid that I have so that I have to do the least amount of fixing up of, of my measurements afterwards. Uh, but if I'm not exactly right on, that's okay. Uh, because I can go in and tweak it a little bit later. So I'm just going to do a rough um, rough trying to get these pictures to go in. And I want to stagger it here because this will be a, um, a special sidebar box, so I want to have that separately. Um, I'm going to take a photo here and I want to go off the page. So when I bleed off the page, I don't end at the edge of the page, but I actually go about a pica outside. So that means at printing time, when the photo gets printed, it won't uh, be cut off over the edge and um, it will it will allow you to it's called a bleed and there's a in your printing template you should have a bleed line that tells you where the edge of the photo is going to to uh, so where the edge of the, the page is and the edge of the photo um, will go off so again I'm going to do a photo here and I'm going to start off the page I'm going to pull in and I'm going to include and I'm going to go to my margin. So I have a bunch of photos and um, that looks pretty good of what I want. Now I'm going to make sure that things actually line up, but I will do that after I place my photos. Now all my photos are in a folder. Now you can take your photos directly from the folder. You can also go into Windows and go Mini Bridge and there's a browser built into InDesign that you can use. Uh, but I actually prefer using just the folder by itself. Now you can go to the folder and click on it on pictures. You can see, okay, which photos do I want to use? Where do I want to use them? And so I can click on, say, oh, that's for the photo of this dinner. I want to use that. Um, or I want to use the f this photo of the nighttime. I can just pull up, I drag it in, and drop it on the box. So it's very easy. You can also select several pictures at a time. You can hold shift, click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one and when you drag it onto your page which I'm going to do it will give you a little spinning wheel and then it will gives you a little preview of the image now because of the capturing software I'm using you can't actually see that but it gives me a little uh, dialog box of what I want to uh, what I'm going to place I'm going to close my window and I have a loaded cursor so I'm going to click on the boxes where I want it and sometimes you will get photos that um, you don't actually want to use and you can hit escape and you can not use those photos and again I wish you could see that part but you can't so I'm just going to quickly place photos in boxes where I think I'm going to want them later on and um, place those in like I said I've got the odd one that I'm actually not using so I come across those and uh, if you have one that you have loaded in your cursor but you forgot to make a box, you can also just take your cursor, drag one, and it places it right into that box. So now I have all the photos that I'm going to use in my spread placed, but I see that some of my spacing is, is not very nice in here, not very even. So I'm going to take my looking glass tool, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to make sure that the edges of my photos all line up with the grid. So I'm going to my black pointer tool, click on a photo, and I can go in, and I can use my bars to slide over and that photo might be okay but the bottom one is not so I'm going to make sure that the photos are all lined up to my grid so that looks alright 
and get my two bleeds go off the page. That's good. I can use my mouse to scroll down. This photo goes to the eye line. This photo here also goes to the eye line, but the photo is too large. And I will show you how to line up your photos in a minute. But I want to make sure first that all my boxes are in the right places. So this looks okay. All the spacing looks all right. This one not quite. I'm going to pull that down so I have that spacing consistent. So I have consistent interior spacing all the way around. This photo is a little too wide. Pull that over. There we go. Now it looks like my, now if I go out, view, fit, spread in window, I can see my entire spread. And that looks pretty decent. Now this large photo is uh, too small for my frame. So what I can do is I can right click on it and go fitting. And I can say fit content proportionately. So if I click, click on that, it will fit the entire photo. So fitting, fit content proportionately, it will click that photo in. Now I want it to be much larger though. So I can click on the middle of the photo and then I have the orange outline. I can hold my corner down, hold down my shift key and resize the photo to the size I want. And then with my hand, I can move the photo so that it's not, nobody's face is cut off in the gutter and things line up the way I want to put it in my picture with the bleed and I've gotten rid of the, the writing at the top because it just bleeds off the page slightly. I'm going to make it a tiny bit larger so there's no chance of that white showing up when the book is trimmed. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the next step is I'm going to go around my other photos. This photo looks all right the way it is. This photo here is way too big. So again, I can click on my circle, hold down my shift key, reduce the size of the photo so I can fit the building into, into my image. Again, I could go right click, fitting, and say fill frame proportionately and it will take the photo and it will make it the right height uh, and I just have to place where I want it width wise. Next photo uh, I'm going to drag and the two kendo players are actually the right size. In the case of the girls not bad but I want to get rid of the street sign so I'm going to move it over and as a result I would like to go a little larger so I'm going to pull it just a tad larger. Over here I have two priests and they don't both fit so again I'm going to go fitting and say fill frame proportionately and move the photo over so that I can get the best shot of the two, two of them. Uh, my toilet seat here I'm going to make a little larger uh, so that the buttons fill my frame and move it up a little bit. I notice that the photo frame I dragged open is a little too large so I'm going to click off the circle so I'm back to my outline of my photo and I can click it. So the, you notice I click on the center I have the photo itself. If I click off it and back onto the frame, I get an outline of just the box and I can resize the box separately from the photo. So I'm going to do that here with the group photo. Again, my group's a little too large, so I'm going to make sure I have one side of them. Click on my circle, hold on my shift key and shrink it down so I can see my entire group. And same with the photo down here. It's too large, so I'm going to shrink it down and decide where my cropping would look best. Over here I've got a little deer and I want to include his feet so again I'm going to click on my shift my circle, click on my shift key and bring him down, bring that photo up until I have him just the way I want him. Uh, for the food, same thing, I'm going to click and uh, that photo is just a bit too large here so again I'm going to make sure that I'm going to right click and say fitting, easier than it bouncing around, so fit content proportionately. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I'm going to use my arrow keys this time to bring it down to the bottom margin. And I'm going to take my box itself and bring the box down so it fits the grid. And I noticed this one here wasn't quite to the bottom, so I'm going to do that. I forgot to check that earlier. So with my deer, I'm the same thing, I'm going to bring it down. And here I've got these two guys. I'm going to move them over a little bit, click on it, make them a little smaller. And now I have all my photos placed in here. Now, I haven't done this one here, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to bring that beach photo in. But you notice something when you look at that photo. My horizon is actually out of whack. So I could go down here and arbitrarily rotate it just a little bit so that my horizon line becomes straight. And that makes a big difference when you look at your photo. You just have to make sure that when you've rotated your image, none of the edges are showing. So you wouldn't want something like this. You want to make sure the entire image fits into the box in all the corners. 
and now I have my, my layout almost ready. I'm going to take a look at what it looks like. I'm going to go to my preview, click on present on um, presentation. It would give me a full screen preview, which is larger than my, my area here. I'm going to hit escape, uh, but uh, you can also go view and say preview, and that will take away any of the grids so you get an idea of what your page looks like. And that's pretty good. So I think next step is that we're ready for text. So I'm going to go back to our normal view and get ready to play some text.